Hi, everybody. Lee Scott here. Thank you for watching and or listening to this week's episode of Leading with Lee. If you have not done it yet, subscribe today on YouTube and all podcasting platforms. So today I have a great, 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 great guest. This is going to be a different kind of episode for leading. Okay, guys, this is something that I've never done before. I kind of we kind of veered off a little bit, but this guest is going to be amazing and have a lot to share with us. Please welcome the Tulsa native, the artist himself, the man who has so much energy. Let's welcome Paparazzi to leading. What's up, brother? What's good? What's good, man? I'm happy to be here for real. This is going to be lit, man. I'm excited. Well, that's great. That's great. Well, you know, thank you for reaching out to me and uh, wanting to have a conversation. So I want to jump right in. So how are you doing? I know we're still kind of for the most part, in the midst of the pandemic, for real. And even mm-hmm. though people out here wilding, uh, <laughs> it <was> really, <laughs> yeah. I mean, right, people, stuff is really going on. So how are you doing? Mm-hmm. How is your family? And, and how have you been doing in these last year or so? Man, um, of course, in short, 2020 was wild. And <laughs> coming to this year, um, I think it really uh, refined me um, to focus. You know what I'm saying? Like, just focus prioritize um, and just, you know, focus basically. That's the best word to say. Um, I'm doing good. I'm doing a whole lot better. Uh, of course, for uh, people who don't know, last year I lost my dad um, to a, a fatal accident. Um, so it uh, wasn't even from COVID or nothing like that. It was actually from a drunk driver, but um, that's tough. Going through a season of grief, that was definitely tough. Um, but man, giving the pain to God, really refine me in a way that, you know what I'm saying? It's on a whole new level. So I'm, I'm good now, man. I'm really, really good now. But that, that's good to hear, Kurt. You know, it's, it takes time and it's not something easy to <laughs> reconcile, especially when you're dealing with the pain of losing. Mm-hmm. Like that's a lot. And, and yeah. it, was, it was, it was tough, man. <laughs> yeah. And, and people, there are people who listen and watch this, that they have, in this last year, in the midst of COVID, it wasn't even COVID that took out their family member, but the loss and the stress of the moment made it so mm-hmm. much easier, right? And yeah, so, yeah. It's a huge thing, but I, I'm not gonna say there because that could be a whole other conversation. About- yeah, that could be a whole. That could be a podcast by itself. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm, I'm a instrument. It was tough. I'm good now and doing better. Um, not to say that I don't still feel some scars from that season, but definitely in a way better place so right that's 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 good to hear so um let's talk a little bit about uh you and what you do man you're an artist you i've Mm -hmm. known you probably three or four years probably and yeah yeah just energetic in what you do and presenting yourself in such a powerful and profound way um just kind of share a little bit with us you know how did you even get into rap and get into hip-hop just in general like what 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 said what, what moment was it like like you know what i want to be an artist and and now that i want to be an artist man. how did i get into the game so just kind of share a little bit about how that process was for you yeah so um my journey with hip-hop started shoot probably i was like 10 11 12 um i but i didn't get to listen to too much hip-hop when i was younger because of the way my mom was so it, I was very limited on what I could listen to. Um, you know, just growing up in a church, my mom was going to church and stuff. So it was like, we, we were very sheltered. Um, but whatever was clean, I would get to listen to. Um, so of course it started off with Christian hip hop. Right. But then I would start off listening to like Common, Tyler Kweli, you know, some of the, some of the like foundational hip hop guys who don't have as much um, or have more substance. Let's just put it that way. Right. Um, so I just started listening to them and then I just love the way they put words together. And I started putting them together myself to tell a story or to um, really express myself. And then um, really, man, I started working on my craft. But as I got older, you know, I started getting into all hip hop. So I was exposed to everything um, because I was able to buy it myself and nobody could tell me no. So, so yeah. yeah. Um, as I got older, um, of course I got into everything and then kind of just create, I really officially started uh, working on releasing my own music when I was like 19. And that was like the first time, like 
I'd been in a studio when before I had just been kind of just, you know, uh, writing and freestyling um, by myself. But about 19, I really started getting into the um, music scene and then dropping music, dropping songs and everything. Um, but I started off really chasing the wrong things. So, um, and really, I mean, I was young, young and just really trying to do it for me. I was just trying to get on, trying to get the bill. So, so, yeah. so that's how it started. But um, really, man, through in the year 2015, um, I released a song and I just didn't have any fulfillment from it. And in that moment, it was like God was asking for that gift. And I just felt like God was asking for the gift. I had been asking for the gift, but you know, I've been running, I was running from it, blase, blase. And so um, in a moment after that last time, I guess of doing, trying to do everything my way, I um, gave my gift to God. And so from 2015 to now, it's been like just a journey of um, submitting my gift to God, uh, really allowing him to refine me into the artist he wants me to be, whether that's in, um, uh, Christian hip hop space or just playing hip hop space, whatever he needs me to be, that's that's where I'm at. Um, I don't necessarily subscribe to Christian hip hop, but my music can't go there. Um, I know a lot of people will debate me on that, but that it is what it is. <laughs> but I try to make music that transcends past the church um, and truly represent um, God and everything that um, he has to offer with people when it comes to peace, love, community, togetherness, unity, and you know, just building. So. So yeah, that's it started started back in the day. Um, but God has definitely my journey now where I'm at, like has definitely refined it to be able to be um not just seen like uh like it was when I first got started. I was just trying to be seen to where now um it's more about impact and everything. So yeah, that's 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 really good. I, I think Kurt, you, you or paparazzi, let me correct myself. <laughs> uh, yeah. you 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 kind of saw the the transformation that was happening with your gift and what you were trying to do as an artist and you have mm -hmm. seen how you differentiated yourself i think every artist goes through an evolution right um and yeah. that's funny that you bring that up because my next question for you was i mean obviously in the music game you've been in the music game i think you realized for over a decade now bro uh mm -hmm. you, you sure, for sure. For, yeah you've been doing this for some years so yeah like there's a lot of, I want to pick your brain specifically about this, but it seems like there's a lot of duplication in the game now, right? There's a lot mm -hmm. of people trying to find out what is the right uh, sound or what could get the radio hit or what is the, you know, yeah. thing. Obviously yeah. we've seen in the music game at one time, it was about lyrics, right? It was about yeah. how many bars you can get in there. Then you, you know, you had the era where you had Twister and, uh, Cannon and all these different people who and Buster mm -hmm. Rhymes and all these people who like were phenomenal fast paced rappers where they you yeah. know and then you have that at the same time you got people like Most Def and Common and all these different people yeah, who are yeah. more conscious yeah. rappers and Lauren Hill and yeah. I've always I, I think as I've gotten older I'm kind of more into conscious rap because I like them talking about the social issues I mean obviously you know you know I probably like conscious rap because that's just kind of my yeah. Heart. Even if yeah. it's Christian space or, you know. Yeah, in, you, need, you need to listen to something that's feeding you. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. right. Everything is everything that's taking you in the way, so. Oh, yeah, man. Like, one of my favorite artists is Show Baraka. Like, I love Show Baraka. Yeah, so Show Baraka yeah, for sure. Has this interesting thing where he, like, is navigating the Christian space, but he's talking about social justice issues in an interesting mm -hmm. way. But that's just mm -hmm. what I like, right? So you have all these yeah. different sounds and, like, how have you learned, bro, how to stay unique and focused on your target audience? But because there's so much temptation to try to morph and be yeah. whatever I want you, but but how have you figured out how to stay in your lane and be impactful that way? Um, well, one I would say I believe that I'm in a great place right now. That took a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of time, especially you know, man, back in 2015, starting completely over, and then allowing God to come in to refine me without trying to reach or do what everybody else is doing. Like I, it took a lot of maturity, a lot of discipline to um, just focus on what God wants me to do to create that. So I want to say I'm in a good lane now, but I'm still learning, you know what I'm saying, as I'm evolving. Yeah. Um, but 
man, it's it for me personally, and I'm I'm just saying for me as an artist, every artist is in line, but for me, it really did start with me defining who I am yeah. with God first, not the music. Like defining Curtis first yeah. before paparazzi because paparazzi can never go anywhere if Curtis ain't whole yeah. or built up and you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I really had to submit myself, come to the end of my uh, end of me and really learn who God is to become the artist that I am today where who I believe is very unique, very different. I stand out and everything. So it, it started out with just finding who I am and, and God. So. Yeah, that's good, bro. I, I think that that is something that no matter what industry people are in or what they do, mm -hmm. they will understand that like your uniqueness matters the most when you preserve it and protect it, right? Absolutely, and, yeah. And we often find identity. And the one thing that I've been talking about a lot this season is we often find identity in what we do. And that's not really a value piece. Your job can change. It's yeah. Change, yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. right. I mean, we look generationally we don't have the, you and I don't have the opportunities and the kids behind us don't have the opportunities to sit in a job for 30 years, right? It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Right, the market is changing all the yeah. time, right? That's not the way, I don't know how our parents did that. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. So, so there has to be a level of commitment to who you are in the process of how you express yourself in the world that no matter my occupation, I'm still going to be myself and bring my uniqueness into that space so that people can see that there is a different way of doing it based on the fact that I am the way that I am, right? Yeah, so, absolutely, yeah. So, so I, I kind of want to move along a little bit, but I want to ask you about this. I mean, obviously you have a poster of Nipsey uh, behind you, man. And, yeah. um, you know, in recent years, we have been seeing a lot of artists kind of die early in some ways, or we, we, we have lost a few artists but the interesting thing about that is these are, I mean, even this year, earlier this year, we lost DMX, but, mm -hmm. but it's interesting because these individuals like Nipsey and DMX had so much influence on the industry in unique ways. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of talk to me a, a little bit about um, your influence and how are you using your influence to, to, move people and impact people, but also just talk a little bit about how maybe, I don't know if Nipsey or DMX has influenced you, but those artists that have influenced you to be unique and kind of stay in your lane. Kind of talk to me a little bit about that. Man, I believe in true influence comes from the spirit of God. No matter if you claiming to be Christian or in the church all the time, I just feel like true influence, true leadership comes from the spirit of God and comes from a vessel, which is us being available to that, being in a place of acknowledging God for everything he is and in awe of who he is. Yeah. Um, speak to Nipsey, to speak to DMX. This is why I think they're so powerful in their influence. Um, and they, like Nipsey was the one, one reason I got Nipsey up here is really because he's a, he's a businessman and he is an influencer. And what he did for his community was like, that's leadership, huge. Yes. Like I'm not the biggest fan of him as a rapper. Right. I just love who, what he did to influence his people yes. and push his community forward. Like that, it, it's it's almost, un, you know what I'm saying, unparalleled, it can't be matched. So that's what I got him on, on my wall. Like a great with his music, but I admire him and um, lift him, you know, just lift him up, you know, because Yo, what he did to have that heart for the people is magnificent. So um, same thing with DMX, even though he had his struggles, when he passed, people were talking more about what, how he treated people. Yes. And yes. his struggles. Yes. And, and how authentic he was. Yes. Not that he was like, you know, dealing with some stuff and then try to hide it. Like, oh, he knew what he was struggling with, but you know, the way he treated people and how he carried it and say, you know what, I am kind of jacked up. You know what, I'm just going to invite God into any whatever situation. I'm going to pray for my people. I'm going to let people know that God is real. Blase, blase, blase. Bro, God is attracted to that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that's the spirit of God working through imperfect vessels. So I... um. I just really believe that influence came from the uh, spirit of God. I know people try to debate it, whatever. I, I know what I mean. So, 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 um, but, um, 
What was the second question outside of that? Outside no, no, of no. That? I mean, I mean, you're, 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 what you're saying is right on the money. And that's what I was mm-hmm. asking about is how are they influenced or the second part is how have they influenced you specifically to yeah. use your influence well? Because that, because, right, we're saying it about them, but, but mm-hmm. we, all of us want to say of our lives that, man, hey, what will people say when I'm gone? You know what I mean? Like, how are yeah. you using yours to impact people and do significant things? Man, it's, it's, I really do, like I said, my music used to be so much about me. Like, what I wanted, what I wanted to do, wanted to be seen, wanted to look like the guy. It was all out of pride. You know what I'm saying? So, I have really just especially matured into the man I am now to walk in more humility. Because when you walk in humility, it's bigger than you. You start being aware of everything else outside of you and the people around you. How can you affect this? How can you influence this? Blase, blase, blase. So, um, man, I try to, whatever God gives me, I try to give it to my people, Yeah. period. No matter what. Like, if God gives me love, I'm giving love. If God gives me wisdom, I'm giving wisdom, guidance, um, revelation, God gives me, I find a new book. I'm telling people about it to build, you know what I'm saying? Build them and everything. You know what I'm saying? It's like, whatever God gives me, I give it to them. And I think ultimately that has, having that openness and transparency of what, where I'm at, where I'm, um, I'm sorry, where I've been, where I'm at and where I'm going has ultimately given me a lot of um, influence and just like, you know, impact with a lot of people. So yeah, that's man, Kirk, that's good, brother. Like that, Thank that, you, that actually speaks to the truth of why we need people to be transparent. I, I kind of want to say right here because, yeah, how, how, I mean, in hip hop, like we were talking about right before we got started recording, how in, hip hop has influenced the industry. Kind of, kind of mm-hmm. share a little bit more about authenticity. I think you're kind of getting an authenticity a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah, like kind of talk to us about authenticity and, and what are your thought processes when you look at that? Obviously, with somebody like DMX, he was extremely authentic. And we yeah, could for sure. be as we could see he was a very authentic in how he approached everything that he did. Kind of mm-hmm. talk to me a little bit about what authenticity looks like and why do we need that? Just not in hip hop, but just in life in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, I think we need authenticity because it's, it it shows people that you're not perfect. Yeah. If we all walk around acting like we're perfect, then what is somebody else going to be able to see or be able to relate to? Um, so then they can basically see that like, yo, I could go as far as this person or a hey, like, man, they dealing with this too. Yeah. Oh, and it opens up a door to a conversation to be able to pass information so then each individual can help each other. So, yeah, I mean, I don't when it comes to I can't trust leaders who aren't authentic. I can't trust leaders who aren't transparent. That's good. Because it's like if you constantly approach me with like what you're doing right now or what you've done and um, or I'm sorry, what you've done um, or let me put it this way where uh, where you're headed or just where you're at right now, whatever, and not authentic and transparent about where you've been, then it's like, how am I really going to learn anything? Yeah. A lot yeah. of leaders sometimes, some, or let's just say some people like to teach or just lead out of their own pride. It's not necessarily to help people. Right. And I think that's when, when a leader is authentic and transparent and open, it shows true humility and it shows that you are here to serve. True leaders yeah. are here to serve. You hear what I'm saying? So yeah, that's it's good. like, man, like that authentic, authenticity is like, it's it's needed, man. Like I, I just don't, I've grown to really just like pay attention and observe. If somebody ain't being authentic and transparent, I can't trust that leadership. Right? So. <laughs> Kurt, you said something that was so key, man, about like, it is showing people the way. You know, I don't, yeah. I even know for me personally with leading, I don't think I share enough about some of the things that I, I've gone through and I'm willing to show those things that I realize, like mm-hmm. even right now and take an opportunity to do that. One of the things I don't think people even know with me about leading, like, bro, mm-hmm. this was an idea or something I tried to start back in 2017. Mm. 
I was fresh out of college, man, trying to figure out, you know, trying to put my voice out there, trying to do something, something else. And I'll write about this eventually, but I'll share it here. But man, it was actually a blog call and nobody, most people have never seen this blog, but it was called Lion Wanderer because I had kind mm-hmm. of found out what my name meant and, and kind of based it <laughs> around there, you know, do something you really need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and bro, I literally had set everything up back in 2017 and I had put some stuff together. I had like, I'm talking about built a website, like all this stuff had written all this material, yeah. different things like that. Yeah. And literally a week before I was about to launch, I had to shut everything down. Mm-hmm. Why, why is that? And because at the time, I didn't think, I didn't understand that I wasn't emotionally ready for the responsibility mm. that it was going to take for me to say what I was saying. Uh, right? okay. And, some, and sometimes, sometimes we get ahead of ourselves. There's some experiences that we need to have. There's some, some reckoning that needed to happen in my own heart. There, there were some things where, bro, I need to actually walk through. I, I need to walk through the fact that I had been molested as a kid. I need to walk through the fact that I had mm-hmm. some childhood trauma connected yeah, to bullying yeah. and all these things that had happened in my life. I needed some moments where I needed to walk through that so I could have mm-hmm. the type of perspective to be able to help someone instead of just vomiting on people and not giving them yeah. answers. Yeah, no, you needed that healing to be able to pass on the healing to somebody else. Right. And and so, you know, it, it's funny because it did happen. And then we yeah. we looked two years later after that, I ended up hosting the first uh, uh, Leading with Lee uh, seminar and mm-hmm. something completely different from the thing that I was actually doing. I was trying to do something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the seminar leads to what we're doing right now in this conversation. Yeah, yeah. And even in that process, me going to therapy, me doing some stuff that I need to do to like mm-hmm. really getting in a men's group where I'd be held accountable and having some conversations about some real stuff. Those things prepared me for this moment to where when I'm having conversations with people about things they're dealing with or things they're going through, I'm like, oh yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. And you're right. Like, Kurt, one thing I've always admired about you, there's a level of honesty that you carry, bro. There's a level of authenticity that when you're talking to people, it, there is there is not that, I don't feel pride for me. Like I feel mm-hmm. a genuine desire to see mm-hmm. people for who they are and actually engage them in ways when people might write them off. And that's huge, mm-hmm. bro. So as it relates to that, what, mm-hmm. is, what does leadership look like? Cause you kind of touched on it, kind of talked mm-hmm. about a little bit, but what does yeah. it look like in your in your mind as it relates to the hip hop space, but just in general for you? Man, in general, it's about giving people the answers. Yes. <laughs> um, from you know, my experiences, but then also pointing them to the standard. Yep. Saying this is where I'm at, but I'm also falling short. This is really the standard and the truth of everything. So yeah. here, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't just look at me. Go up, go. It's almost like um, so many people got caught up in Moses, looking at Moses going up to the mountain instead of going up to the mountain themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Like this. So it. it's like, it's like, I think true leadership is just about, hey fam, we gotta get moving. But yeah. don't just look at me. I'm not the prime example. I'm not your foundation. I need you to continue going on. If I fall off tomorrow, or something takes me out tomorrow, you still got to go to the mountaintop. So I think that's what true leadership is about. And that's why you have to have that openness, that transparency, that authenticity. Because if you constantly approach people with, um, you got it all together, they are going to just look at you. But if you open up and say, nah, I don't have it all together. Like, that's why I love DMX. Like, it's like, he was showing that he didn't have it all together. Yeah, bro. But still at the same time, leading people to Jesus in the most wildest way we've ever seen. You, know, you get yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like, man, um, or just inspiring people. Um, I, I've had a friend that said the other day that uh, literally DMX was like her father. Wow. Like, she was genuinely sad when he died because of the way that he just walked. It was like, but anyway, um, but yeah, man, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, showing like showing still having it and giving people the answers and then showing that even where you don't even live up to the answer and pointing people to the standard of truth so of everything 
that's in finances, relationships, yes, uh, you know, religion, uh, building your business, whatever. Like, just show people I ain't got it all together, but here's the standard. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that's in general when it comes to um, um, music. The question was, uh, you said leadership and music. Yeah, man, I I think when it comes to music, man, it's I think it's the exact kind of the exact same thing is a little different because I mean you got to go through the process of making a song right. you got to go through the process of making a song that speaks to people but then it's also replay value and that's that's a process because you don't want to just always be truth true truth and then you don't get replay value right. or you know um and stuff like that so that's that's a balance that <laughs> it's it's a constant struggle but um man leadership in music I think it, but ultimately for me it just comes to me being off the same person I am outside of music, man, just being authentic and telling people that as I'm inspiring people, of course, uh, you know, uh, sliding on these beats and making something that people can buy to, that I'm saying words that are going to bring impact and healing for them to be motivated to go to the next day. Every song that I do now is based around healing and impact. It's, it's meant to motivate you to either connect with God connect with his people and then connect with the dreams and the goals that he has for you. Like that's, that's my target audience right there. That's my, that's, that's my demographic. I, I generally, you go through my catalog, every song is going to motivate you to do something or give you a, a perspective on um, how to walk your journey out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, all, I, all I say is that when it comes to leading them my music, man, I give people Curtis through paparazzi. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. You said so much good stuff. And I'm trying to figure out what I want to grab onto or last year. <laughs> and I've been listening. I'm like, oh, gosh, there's so much good stuff that you said. But I, I guess mm. I'll kind of move on because I had like 15 questions popping in my head. Oh, man. Oh, man. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, you're good. No, you're good. That's, that's, that's what people need to hear. People need to be encouraged by the fact that you understand why you're here, why you do what you do. And, and, mm -hmm. and, you can't, people go through so much of their lives trying to be other people that they fail to be themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. that's what we're held accountable for, being ourselves. But that's you it. have to have a moment where you meet yourself. And mm -hmm. meet yourself is the one of the most powerful things that can happen to a person. You know, mm -hmm. it, 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 it is a profound thing that can happen. But, but you that's kind it. of start touching on my next question at the end. Because okay. people that listen to this and, and are going to, you know, watch this and they're going to say to themselves, well, you know, Kurt, been, uh, Paparazzi been at this for the last, you know, decade or so. And, you know, he's yeah. like writing bars and whatever, but I'm not going to be a rapper. I mean, I might want to write books or I might want to uh, uh, start a uh, nonprofit or I might want to do this other thing. What are some advice you would give to upstarts, man, uh, who are trying to find them what find their voice and elevate themselves in, in a particular space. So like what advice would you give to them? Um, do what you're passionate about and don't worry about if anybody sees it. Don't do it to be seen. Focus. Like I, I keep saying it over and over, but focus on impacting people, like focus on the change. Even if the change is only 10 people. Yeah then you're operating in your purpose and gift or potential that God has for you. Yeah. If you just focus on your passion and deliver your passion to whoever is supposed to hear it, then that's how you get started. I mean, I'm not, I'm in the process of doing a lot, uh, of course, still doing um, music full time or in the process of building, you know, my goals and dreams and everything. But what I'm saying is I learned from when I first got started, to not do it to be seen. Yes. God is over elevation. You get what I'm saying? Like he's yeah. gonna reveal you at the right time. Yeah. Your goal is to just master your craft and master your passion or master the ideas and thoughts that he's giving you. And then at the right time, he'll send the right people or the or be, reveal you to the right people and everything. So I just tell everybody, if you wanna start anything, one, well, I'll say something a little bit more practical. One get off of social media and start watching everybody else do that stuff exactly that's that's a big key that's Bro, a big key. <laughs> huge key. i'm gonna let you finish but as a relation uh, that a lot of people have spent so much time trying to mimic 
and not figure out what it is they want to say. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of people get caught up in one, like I love social media because you can reach more people, but the sad thing about social media, it opens up the doors for us to get distracted. Yep. We start, we see like, I can, I can see Lee and be like, you know what, maybe I'll do a leadership podcast and do this, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's not my, first of all, it's not my idea. Right. But, you know, I can see how you're going, how you're being seen and, you know, look at the likes or look at the shares and be like, man, let me try to do that. When God is like, you could do that, but that's not what I really called you to do. Right. So it's, and what I'm saying is back to my point is like, man, if God gives you an idea, take time to withdraw. And I'm going I'm to take it a little, That's I'm going to go no. biblical on people right here because Jesus That's withdrew weird. often for a reason. Yes. And his main reason was to be prepared for ministry or to be prepared for his purpose, his yeah. goal, and whoever he was supposed to encounter, however you want to look at it. There's, there's all different ways you can look at it. But you got to withdraw from the world to really hear what um, God wants you to do yeah. and be charged up for that. Yeah. So what's the, the, the biggest thing that has us connected to the world is social media, or, you know, stream any type of streaming apps. You got to be able to shut those things out or create a, dis a discipline to um to be able to really hear God and go forward in that. And you may have to do that four or five times out of the week. It's not, not a, like I said, create a discipline out of it. You got you to gotta create a discipline. So that's my main thing is just like, man, um, find out what God wants to do. Stick with it. Don't, don't uh, try to compare or try to, you know, compete with other people. Get off of social media. And just um, see, you know, see what God's talking about, and go forward with it. Don't don't walk in faith, not fear. Sometimes yeah. we God gives us a thing. We like, man. Um, ooh, real quick, thank you. Uh, you leaders and followers ask the same question. They say, "How can I?" Mm -hmm. But a follower says it out of fear. A leader says it out of faith. Yeah. A follower says, "Man, how can I?" Like God, I don't. I don't I don't know, but a leader says it out of faith, like, ooh, how can I? And I'm gonna step out on faith. And even through trial and error, I'm gonna put that faith. How can I? How yeah. can I? How can I? I'm gonna figure it out. So I just encourage people, man, like for real, see what God's talking about. If he gives you an idea, always ask, how can I out of faith? And then uh to create a discipline to um not be distracted and go forward with it. Yeah, I wish I had the button that Raheem has over at Reach Over Culture, bro. Where he put that oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. That's yeah. so good, yeah. Kurt. That's so yeah, good, Bob. Yeah. Like, bro, you that that is something that is so hard for people to get. And it takes time. Like, bro, you mm -hmm. just gave a time. huge nugget about retracting and pulling yourself away from stuff. Because it, that's real, man. You can get so distracted with posting that you fail to actually do the hard work or of, of working on your craft and getting better at your own craft and your unique Absolutely. style and, and voice. You know, it reminded me of something. I'll share this real quick, but but because we got to move on because everything you said was amazing. I ain't trying to add <laughs> nothing to what you had. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it made me think about a conversation that I had with someone and they asked me a very interesting question. They were like, you know, who are some of the leadership people that you like or listen to? You know, who are who are the ones you're trying to follow? And initially, I came up with all these people that I, I kind of have read or listened to or whatever. But then I had to stop myself. I had to ask myself, why am I trying to be them? Why would I mimic what they do? Going back to what you said earlier, what the world needs is our unique voice. Mm -hmm. And if we fail to be ourselves, the world will miss out on something that is significant because we were too busy for me Let's talk about people in my quote unquote industry. For me, the mm -hmm. leadership people are people like uh, Grant Cardone or John Maxwell or uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Eric Thomas or Craig you know, Rochelle. Yeah. yeah, Craig Rochelle. The, mm -hmm. You can get so caught up in mm -hmm. how they do stuff that you miss yeah. the fuck, or Lisa Nichols. And then you start, or Les Brown, you can miss the unique lane He's that is for me. Right, you know, bro, bro, you oh, not to cut you off, but no, you're good. You know, why sometimes we get so caught up in you start idolizing these people basically. Um, it's because we want the success, and then our definition of success oh, is so on. mixed up. 
we think that, especially living in our culture, our American culture, we yeah, think sure. that success is always about the million followers, the money, the, the, fi- the uh, well, everyone should have financial freedom. But my point is like, you know what I'm saying? We look at the Instagram followers, all the likes and everything. And then we saying, I got to be like that person. But it's like, what if Lee is just called to a solid 20 yeah. that's going to be able to go out into the world to affect another 200 or 200,000, blase, blase, right. blase. Just like you said, it's all about finding your own uniqueness and playing your part. It goes back to another biblical reference, Ananias, bro. Don't nobody talk about Ananias, bro. Mm-hmm. Ananias showed up, did his job for Paul. Paul went to the masses. Yep. Sometimes it's all about just playing your part. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then go, going forward with that. But anyway, yeah, bro. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I mean, I mean, man, the, the, we got to get off this particular subject because I think. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I mean, told you it was going to be a fire conversation, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's so good, man, because it's it's such a reminder of how important it is for people to really, really understand what you're talking about. And that mm-hmm. is to get focused. You're talking about focus. like, like there's a reason why horses and horse races have blinders on because sure, they get distracted bro. by yeah. other horses. They won't get to the finish line. And bro, I'm trying to get to the finish line. And also, you know, I've shared this many times on here before, but but man, you know, people get mixed up. Like we 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 get mixed up that of that quantity and quality thing, man. We think like people don't understand that there's a difference in who's in the room with the president and in the room uh, listening to an artist sing. There's thirty thousand people in the room when the artist is singing, but yeah, up to the president, there's thirty people. Yeah, 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 for sure. Right, for sure. The the impact is not based on the size. The yeah, impact is yeah. based on the purpose. Exactly. What is exactly. it? Exactly. And pe- and we get so make mixed up in that process. But I'm move because Kirk ain't, ain't about to do this with you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you already know. Every time we link up, you know we end up talking for hours anyway. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You know I, I know we you got a time we, limit. Right. We got all the time in the world. So let yeah. me move on a little bit. I, I do have this next question for you, but as it relates mm-hmm. to music and just kind of your perspective about music, uh, because I think all of these things are connected. What do you think, Mm -hmm. man, this next decade is going to look like in the music industry? Because it seems like, obviously, decades are defined by Mm -hmm. unique sounds, unique, you know, styles and stuff like that. Obviously, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we know the 90s, the people that dominated the 90s was people like Snoop and early 90s, it was uh, uh, people like uh, uh, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube and, and Biggie and uh, uh Tupac they were they were the sound of the 90s like they, yeah, they really, really yeah. dominated that decade in a num- in a significant way even though even after their passing they still were some of the most significant artists and and you know the 2000s you had all you had a lot of dance music in hip hop in an interesting way you know we yeah, we had yeah, moments yeah. with Chingy and and yeah. uh, a soldier boy and you know uh-huh. millionaire you know all these these dance songs and and stuff like that in the 2000s. And 2010 seemed like it had an interesting moment where you have more conscious rap coming to the forefront where you had a lot of mm-hmm. artists, at least hip hop artists, be, being like the mainstream. Like it was mainstream artists, like pop artists are having hip hop artists get on their songs because yeah, it will make, yeah, yeah. it will happen to get more, you know, views or perspective because the main genre of music that's the most impactful is hip hop at this point, right? And then you yeah, got- Yeah, for sure, yeah. Right, you got those breakouts where you got conscious rap still, and you have you have sing rap is a right. thing now, and mm-hmm. mumble rap is yeah. a thing, and all these different yeah. spaces. What do you think this next decade is going to look like? Because as we get into the twenty twenties for the game, music game, um, one I think it's man, it's I, I see it as just like endless possibilities, and there's a lot that comes with that. Um, but ultimately, I see I see honestly in the next decade a lot of substance coming back to hip hop. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. a, a lot of people that came out around that 2010 era, um, some of my favorite people, Big Sean, Drake, um, J. Cole, Kendrick, um, Nipsey, man, um, you know what I'm saying? A lot of those people, um, they, they're they pioneers now. Yeah. And they're speaking to that younger generation and although 
let's just say there's a lot of avenues and doors open for people to be independent. So the music is flying like yes. crazy. It's hard to keep up with new music these days. Yes, like, bro. It's yes. super, super hard. Even though the doors are open for people to drop music like crazy, it's not, I would say, pure and lasting for a long time. Yeah. Like, I think that in the next decade, we're going to get back to seeing artists that are really going to last for 15, 20 years. When you think about the people I just mentioned, they've been around for about 15 now. <laughs> they, go, they are leading. But how many new people can we really compare to them right now? Right. It's kind of hard to, even me being a person, a, a student of hip hop, it's kind of hard to think of a new person that is matching up to that caliber of some of the pioneers that we saw from 10, 15 years ago. So I believe that, you know, the people um, are going to become very hungry for more substance and the pioneers are going to influence people that are going to be able to give us that in the next five to 10 years. Yeah. And I think there's an element of that that we're seeing, right, with especially now in light of 2020 and all the mm -hmm. people seeing stuff, you saw younger artists like you just never thought would, you know, take that, make that turn, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah. I, you have people like baby and Lil Baby Bro, like, yeah, I never would have imagined them making that kind of turn, right? Making that yeah, yeah, yeah. unique yeah. transition where they're starting to talk about social justice issues, even though their music is a specific type of way, right? They, they ain't saying their yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. they're kind of bringing the element of social justice and talking about blackness in their music. Mm. And then, you know, mm. there's this other thing where we are seeing a plethora of female hip hop artists be huge. Yeah, Kobe, for sure. Megan, yeah. uh, Sweetie, I mean, Nikki, mm -hmm. Nikki almost at this point, she's like a legend now. She's like, you know, she's. she's oh, no, she is. She, she made her mark. Right, don't, right. Don't, don't downplay what Nikki has done. Like, yeah, she, <laughs> she played her part. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're seeing kind of that, like, there's such a shift, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Cash Doll. Like, these, it's such a change in the. And uh, on the side. Now, I'll head. also add that hip hop is maturing. Yes. Like, when hip hop started, it was more. Let's get this money. You know what I'm saying? We're just trying to get on. Like it came from a survivor's mentality. Yes. And especially because hip hop is our culture. That's 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 black folks. That's us. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it came from a survivor's mentality. Hip hop opened the door for a lot of people to transition to be billionaires or millionaires now. So that means when you're on that millionaire, billionaire level, you ain't thinking on survival no more. You're thinking about more legacy. You get more opportunities for yes. better emotional, mental, and spiritual health. Yeah. So hip hop was, it, I, I heard someone say before, it's a, it's a young man's game, but I just believe that now within the next five or 10 years, it's becoming a more mature game for everybody because they used to say like, man, you ain't, you ain't made it by that 18 to 25, then it's over for you. But, right. you know, we all know some one of the greatest hip hop MCs of all time. Jay-Z is still dropping verses for everybody. Yes. Like, and some he, will say they almost biblical. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so, and, <laughs> so. and what's even crazier about Jay is he started at what, 26, 27? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he started yeah. after the window that people thought that you could only be. Absolutely. Game, Absolutely. Right? Same thing with Kanye. Um. I don't know if you ever heard of D Smoke. D Smoke didn't really pop off till he was that on a rhythm and flow. D Smoke, yeah. my that boy so cold, bro. Yeah. Oh he my cold, goodness! It's like it's He's it's now. That's what I'm saying, it's, yeah, it's like that that stigma of like, oh, you gotta have it popping by this time. It's starting to die off, and yep. um, I, I I would just say that, but because there's such a big window and door open for everybody to yeah. distribute their music people the consumers have to be more intentional with finding that balance of substance and you know i would say righteous and ratchet you know what i'm saying because we got to have our fun too you got to have our fun too but righteous and ratchet and really know who's out there because man the doors are just the floodgates are just open so don't i just encourage me don't say that nobody ain't out there giving us what we need yeah take time to really find this search on the spotify or apple you know what i'm saying things is find those new artists and everything but i believe it's, it's circling back around to like a new, because 
oh man, one thing I don't like is when people say the 90s was the golden age. It was a great age, but I do not believe that was the pinnacle of what hip hop could be. Like we, like there's so much more happening in hip hop. And I wanna be clear, like just because I named some of those certain people for 10 or 15 years ago, that doesn't mean they're, they're the only ones, those are the ones I can think of. Like Lil, Lil, uh, Lil Baby, the Baby, um, ooh, Rhapsody. Do you listen to Rhapsody? She's cold. She cold, I don't bro. listen to Rhapsody, but Rhapsody is cold. Hard. She is cold. One of the greatest uh, MCs of our time right now, bro. What's but, her name? Uh, I don't wanna get off track, but. Is her name <laughs> you Chaka? Is the other girl named Chaka? I think so. Um, coffee, but they're, they're they're out there, bro. Yes, coffee. They're out like, there. Yeah, and and you they're know they're out there, and and it's just like, man, like I think you know uh, as people mature, and then even some of this younger generation who is looking more for answers in the root of everything, yes. and not just taking what somebody tells them. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be a wave of people just giving giving words of impact and power um, to truly uh, influence the mind and the heart and the spirit of people. So Man. whether you're in a church or not, whether you're in a church or right. you know, just in it. So. Right. I think I think the influence on the culture is something that I know I don't talk about this enough, but I think just for black people and I think it's in all people, but I just want to specifically mm-hmm. talk about black folks you know there might be different people that watch this or listen to this but there's something in our dna in our blood in our thought processes that makes us have a connection to what we're saying and what we're doing there's like behind it that struggle that that pain that heartache that 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 longing to know where we come from that longing to connect that Mm -hmm. has produced the type of you know sound that we have and and mm-hmm. you know, how we are impacting forward. You kind of touched on this, and and I hope you give me a quick answer. But I, but your answers was great. You know mm-hmm. how uh, because because it, it, you kind of talked touched on people like you know Jay Diddy. Um, obviously, we talked about Nipsey earlier. Chance is doing these type of things. Absolutely. Uh, uh, where, where they are becoming significant. Uh, uh, significant um, uh, standard bears for their cities, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kill Mike, yeah. Uh, uh, Tim. Yeah, kill him, Mike. I mean, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, Flo Rida. You know, you got all these people yeah. who are becoming yeah. ambassadors for their hometown. How are you thinking? Mm-hmm. What is your thought about hip hop and how it's influencing the culture in general, and more specifically, like business and culture, like? What are your thoughts about that? This is my thought, man. I'm, I'm gonna try to say this with grace. <laughs> um, this is my thought. I believe the industry messed up. Really? And didn't realize that they opened the door for black folks to truly create legacy. Think about it. Yes. B- before you, black folks would be put on for entertainment, sports, yeah. Um, and servanthood, basically. Like yeah. they that's what we was looked at for years. That's yeah. we gonna we're gonna flourish in that. They know we're gonna win in that. But when it comes to business, finances, you know what I'm saying? Like actually uh creating um legacy. That door wasn't open for us like that. Yeah. Um, but you look at us as an entertainment, you start putting this on and you start some of these, uh, let's just say uh, our, our people were exposed to some people who had those keys and they learned from them yeah. and they start thinking I can create legacy. Yeah. Like I'm telling you within which, which it's like within the next like 10 to 20 years, bro. Like that's why there's been such a shift where People like, especially us in our culture, people are thinking past survival now. Yeah. Where our parents oh, yeah. used to think survival, where we're thinking like, nah, I, everything I do is for the generation and generation down the road. Yes. Like black folks don't have generational wealth. You know what I'm saying? We don't, it's very few of us that have that. Yeah. White folks have that. They've had that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I just feel like, man, like 
they I think the door was open for entertainment, but that was like the biggest blessing for us to really shift generations down the road because some people started thinking and like, nah, we got to do something different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that that's Kurt, you you touching on something that I, I'm trying <laughs> not to go there. Don't push yeah. it. <laughs> because that is <laughs> that is a real thing. And I think it's generationally there is a hunger for mm -hmm. being in the place where you can ensure that your children's children are, mm -hmm. are beneficiaries of what you build. Something Absolutely. that I plan to talk about on leading, but I'm going to talk about it now. There's one person that I, I personally admire. Um, his name is John Hope Bryan. I don't know if you know who John Hope Bryan is. I've heard the name, yeah. But one of the things that John Hope Bryan talks about a lot, particularly African-Americans, he talks a lot about how do we teach Black people to create equity for themselves? It is important mm -hmm. for Black people and just... And, and not just black people, there'll be people that, that may not be black that listen to this, but for all people, it is important for, for, for people to have home ownership. People don't realize, bro, people don't realize, I know we gotta move on, but people don't realize how much your life changes when you mm -hmm. own a house. Bro. You can, you can start a business, you can see your kids to school. Like, bro, I have a master's, but if my parents didn't own their home or weren't, by like I probably wouldn't get gotten access to student loans, right? Because mm -hmm. my parents own property. My grandfather, mm -hmm. by God's grace, we found out in the last few years that his great his uh his grandparents had a bunch of acres of land. They put up, gave him a certain part of that land. Me with my education and my expertise and understanding is like I'm about to create generational wealth for our family simply because you all got the blessing of it being passed down. We now have the aptitude to know what to do with it, right? Absolutely, yeah. And, 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 and going back to something you said, bro, there is a level of hunger to build things that matter. But, and I'm gonna say this real quickly, John Brown talks about home ownership, but he also, talk, also talks to black people about building your credit. Why is it important to build your credit? What is some healthy ways to build your credit? Is it necessarily getting a credit card? Is it you do it another way? Like there are ways to do these things to help ourselves and position ourselves to have economic power because with economic power, you can transform communities. That's why mm -hmm. Jay is so powerful. That's yeah. why Diddy yeah. is so powerful. That's why the conglomerate of artists, what, what, mm -hmm. what, what, like going back, what he just said with Tip and, and uh, Killer Mike okay. and all these people, how they yeah. have. And they 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 also did a super powerful thing is they tapped into the wisdom of our forefathers. Mm -hmm. They tapped into conversations that they were having with people like Andrew Young and and and, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna say this and, and I know we have to move on and I just a lot of yeah. people don't understand. I literally told my dad this last night, last night or two nights ago. I said to my dad, mm -hmm. I said, well, people don't realize even with Dr. King. One of the most profound things that was happening with Dr. King was at the end of, at, around the last year to his life, he was about to do something that people weren't ready for. And a lot of people mm -hmm. didn't understand this. Martin Luther King started talking about economics. Mm -hmm. He started talking about economic power because he knew mm -hmm. that if black folks got their hand on property, and black mm -hmm. folks got their hand on banks, and black people mm -hmm. got their hands on all these resources, you could mm -hmm. not stop them from doing anything now we had we that in our communities yeah. right mm -hmm. right you had yeah black banks and different like that because we couldn't you know integrate in other ways but yeah he realized let's get poor whites let's get a lot latinx community involved let's get the asian community involved let's all start really pushing towards economic fulfillment economic change absolutely bringing equity that's when he became a threat right yes there. yeah because because <laughs> they were fine with yeah. you having civil rights Oh, yeah, yeah. You had the right to vote. If you, especially if you're just talking about for your own people, but when you start talking about bringing people together, that's a different thing. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to say this because we'll be there for a long time. I'm going to say this, man. When Just like you said, learning equity and truly ownership, one of the things that I've been um, really, uh, one of the books I'm reading right now is uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by uh, yes. Robert um, Kiyosaki. Is that how you say yes. this one? Yes. Okay, but I've been reading that and understanding how to make money work for me instead of going to work for money yeah. you know what i'm saying like that's something that that's a that that little what i just said alone is something that a lot of people don't even hear in their lifetime you know what i'm saying especially for our culture so 
Um, yeah, I definitely from what you said, what I'm saying right now, people, please uh, learn finances and learn how to build a generational wealth. Um, but I would say this too, but the only thing that doesn't lose value in, the, in this country or anywhere is land. Brother, don't make me. Miles Monroe said it the best. I was, I'll quote Miles Monroe. Yeah, dog. Said, land is where it's at. Yeah, like you can't even truly establish the kingdom of God if you don't have any land. Now, some will say that's a little extreme, but it's like, no, nah, that's real. Like, if we are supposed to take yeah, dominion and on this earth, then we have to own land. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's, that's so that's a little nugget for everybody. I, I know we can touch on that for a while, but, but man, like, really learn generational, uh, learn how to build generational wealth, learn how to make money work for you. Um, I will, oh, let me say this real quick. People, as you're upstarting, as you're going after uh, whatever you're passionate for, whether that's music, writing a book, doing a podcast, whatever. And if you still have to work a job, that's fine. Do that until you get to a point where you can, you can let it go. But always choose that job around how much it benefits you and the thing that you're building. Don't just go to a job for money. Wow. That's, that's a key in making sure that you're not going to work for money that you're wow. that the money is going to work for you. So make sure you're yeah. choosing a job that you can truly use to invest into your passion wow. to truly walk out your purpose. So that's some that's that's something that literally I've learned um, and been walking in over the past three years. But I didn't fully understand um, wow. kind of that draw or whatever that walk where that came from in the spirit until like really recently. But it's really like find something that's going to benefit you um to take care of your essentials of course your necessities but then you can use it to invest into your passion because this whole clocking in for someone else's dream that's not the business no more so nope. <laughs> i'm gonna have to move on yeah uh, yeah, brother, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is that's heavy and that's real and that's so that's real. good that's yes, so sir. rich it, it, we it, gotta free the people, bro. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. What Malcolm say? The future belongs to those who prepare for it. But exactly. I'm not prepare for the future right now, dog. I, I, that's me. the reasons why I got that. Yeah, on my yeah. I see it. I see. Malcolm it. <laughs> was talking about something, bro. That we people were sleeping on. Malcolm was talking about the mm-hmm. power of taking our power back and understanding mm-hmm. who we are. And people saw that as you know being too aggressive and different things like that but that mm-hmm. applies to any person black Absolutely. Life, yeah. hispanic young old woman man it is there's yeah. some power in taking your power back and saying hey this is who i am this is what i'm trying mm-hmm. to build and i'm gonna do everything in my power to get to the place where i believe that i'm called to be so man that's and that's the that's the difference between a leader and a follower yeah bro a follower will say all right i'm gonna take this money and take the bare minimum too you know what I'm saying? Just to be able to make it. But a leader says, nah, let me figure out how to get that money for myself and build my own. Like, that's the difference right there. So. <laughs> paradigm shift, paradigm shift, paradigm shift. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. So my All second right. last question for you, because you you answered actually one of my questions I was going to ask you, but man, how are you paying it for, paparazzi? What are, what are some things that you're doing, man, to really invest in other people? I I, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of stealing from your answer, but I see that you about to have a podcast. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh-huh. I've been yes, peeping, sir. y'all. I've been peeping. Yes, sir. Man, um, but uh, man, how I'm paying it for? Like I said before, whatever God blesses me with, um, whether that's in the spirit or in a practical or physical um thing, where it comes to being blessed from other people, I. I give it. I, I truly believe that whatever God gives me, whether it's in the spirit or from another person, it was from him. Yeah. It's his. You know what I'm saying? It's his. So who am I to hold on to information? That's that's probably the, the biggest thing that can free anybody is information, knowledge. Knowledge is power. That's what they say. So it's like how I pay it for, man, I, I have people i'm you know me i'm big on community i'm big on people um i believe that's truly god's kingdom right there um whatever i get i pass it on to somebody else bro 
it's it's as simple as that. There's no there's no strategy. There's no blueprint to it. There's it's just literally whatever I get, I pass on to my people. It's their responsibility to pick it up. If they don't, I can say I did my job. I passed it on to them. you. Know what I'm saying? Um, one thing that got me kind of helped me do that, man. I was really blessed by a long time ago in 2015. I met this guy who was uh, very passionate about God. And I was wilding at the time. I was still having sex. You know what I'm saying? I was doing all types of crazy stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I was out there. You know what I'm saying? But, the words of all yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't, I hadn't started behaving yet, as they say. Right. Um, and I hadn't disciplined myself. Um, but this guy would, uh, at my job, would uh, consistently, when we had time, he would uh, read the Bible and, um, you know, just be doing him, really. And I, and I was intrigued by that because he was so disciplined in it. But in short, man, he, he really discipled me, like really showed me the love of God, showed me what I could do, what God like wanted for me and taught me how to read the Bible. Um, and then there was one other person. And so I've always cherished that and and really just did the exact same thing with the people that I encountered and so um to this day man I have people that just God has placed on my heart and I try to be um obedient to that to be able to um always give them information give them revelation give them guidance um if it's just as simple as just being a brother um being a friend you know, I try to give that to people because I know what it's like to be in a place where I, I didn't have that. So I always had the door. That's how I pay it for it. Um, but back to the uh, the podcast, a big part of me paying it for it is going to be on this podcast. Like, I feel like God has refined my life so much with a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom, a lot of revelation, a lot of um, personality, a lot of character um, that I cannot show um, in a song all the time. You know what I'm saying? So this is my podcast. I'm so excited about it. Uh, shout out to uh, my my sis, Imani. Shout out to my bro, Charles Gordon. They're going to be a part of it. Um, this is my space to really speak kind of like we're speaking right now on a lot of topics and then give um, my perspective from my experience, which is just a part of the view, but it's just, um, you know what I'm saying? My perspective and experience that people can eat off of and uh, truly get some fruit off of and then go on and, about their life. Um, and just, just a little reveal, uh, the podcast is going to be called I'm Just a Rapper. So just in case somebody wants to cancel me for my opinion, y'all just remember the title says, I'm just a rapper. My, my, my view, my view ain't the end all. It's just a part of it. So, so yeah, man, I'm truly excited about that. What? Man, Papa Rossi, I'm excited about that, bro. I, I think <laughs> yes, sir. It's going to be fun. And it's going to be fun. And I trust me, I will be listening. And I'll let you know. Yes, sir. Listening. Um, so man, my I last question it. for you is, always my fun question i love asking this question to artists and just people in general bro i've mm -hmm. got some of the most interesting answers on this question i've gotten answers from knuck of your buck to uh you made away by travis green so yeah, yeah, yeah. where you go is what you yeah. want to say but um bro like what song you used to describe yourself and why man um i have to say my song um i Let's have to go. say one of my songs it's uh it's it's actually just recently um released a couple months back but it's called bad boy and it's on my project uh fun um the story of bad boy and that was centered around how my dad walked the reason why i choose that song is because it really does talk about and reflects how curtis walks like how much i give the people the humility the the um the willingness to be uh, the the willingness to, to be able to su submit to um, the obedience and to truly have the heart um, for people and to walk with them and everything. So um, I would say that that song, um, uh, and it shows a lot of leadership, a lot of leadership. So, so yeah, that's, that's it. Um, slight plug on my, <laughs> on my music. Um, if I was to choose something different, um, man, I would say, uh, um, it's called I Can Make It. And in, actually, I got a whole bunch of them, but it's called I Can Make It with uh, Rhapsody. And um, Lord Jesus, what's his name? Uh, gosh, I, I hate the. Um, you good, bro. 
no, no, I gotta hold on. Let me find it real quick. Hold on. I gotta tell you, it's it's called I Can Make It with uh Rhapsody. He's on TDE, he's not known that much. Uh Jesus, come on, Kurt. <laughs> it's right. Hold on. Right. Hold on. Okay, Rhapsody and um Reason. There we go. Okay. Reason. He's on TDE, check him out. Um, but yeah, they they make a dope song. Um, just go listen to it. So yeah, I would say that. Well, Kurt, well, excuse me, paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming on, bro. I I I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation and like there there's so many wise things that you have said, so many things that people need to peep and I real and realize that like the time is now to be engaged in the game, right? Mm -hmm. The world needs us right now to be thinking about how we're gonna be impactful, be thinking about what do we wanna build? What are we trying to create? Who, mm -hmm. you know, a, a recent guest I had on the podcast, he said something super powerful to me and I'll just say it real quick as we end. He said, bro, mm -hmm. there are two people you need to be trying to impact and trying to uh, think about is the seven year old you and the 70 year old you. And what he said was, he said, the seven, he said, you should want the seven-year-old you to look up to you at this point in your life and say, man, he's a cool person. And the 70-year-old you to look back and say, man, I did that thing, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And, yeah. and that's what we're all trying to live towards and move towards. So, Paparazzi, bro, mm -hmm. thank you for coming on, man. It, it was, I yes, enjoyed man. you, bro. This was yes, so sir. great. Thank you, man. Thank you. I love, I, I really do appreciate you. Give me a platform. I know we, we were supposed to do it I, actually way before <laughs> even this time. And we missed yeah. it, but I think, mean, it's definitely in God's timing, man. So I appreciate you having me on, man. Thank you. And I love exactly what you're doing, man. For real, keep doing it. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for watching and are listening to this week's episode of Leading with Lee. If you have not done it yet, subscribe today on YouTube and all podcasting platforms. To get more information about me and what I'm doing, email me at scottconsultations at gmail.com or follow me on social media on Twitter and especially Instagram at Lee A. Scott II or Lee A. Scott II. Thank you for watching this week's episode. I really appreciate it. Much love and let's get started.